eight months ago when rumors of the M2 MacBook Air first started to come out, I was convinced that this was gonna be the machine that I buy and use as my regular machine. Like I was so certain that I would be an M2 MacBook Air user because new M2 chip, new form factor, really nice design aesthetics on those leaks. Uh, but having gone this thing in, it's a really good machine, but it's not quite what I expected. Now, my review unit is this midnight color. It's like a dark blue finish. I like the look of it. And when I unboxed it, it also came with this braided MagSafe cable that is color matched. It's also a midnight colored MagSafe cable. And also it came with color matched Apple stickers as well as the 35 watt dual charger. Now this is uh, an optional accessory that comes with the upgraded versions of the M2 MacBook Air, but it has two ports for charging multiple devices. So this is a very nice looking machine. It's got the design aesthetics of the bigger 14 and 16 inch devices, but it's thinner and lighter and it comes in this wicked blue color. Uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, the first MacBook that Apple has made that has had a dark metal finish. Like we've seen dark plastic MacBooks, but never something as dark as this. I like the look of it, but the fingerprints are everywhere. Like you just touch it for a little bit and just smudges and fingerprints just start appearing. It's not uncommon with dark colored metal laptops, like the razor blades get covered like this as well. But if you're sensitive to this stuff, go for a lighter color or get a skin to go over it on the top. There are two USB-C ports on the left. These support Thunderbolt 4, but it still only supports one display out. There's also the MagSafe connection on that side. And then on the right, you have the high impedance headphone jack. Now on the bottom of the new MacBook Air, the feet look a little bit different. These are kind of in the style of the new 14 and 16 inch uh, MacBook Pros. It's just like a minor difference, but I gotta say, I like this new one more. Uh, it's also an even bottom, like the previous generation had a taper to it, but this is like a flat bottomed uh, M2 MacBook Air. Okay, let's talk about performance. So the chip that's in here in the Air is the same chip technically as the one that's in the M2 MacBook Pro underneath there, but the performance is a little bit different. If you only look at short benchmarks, the M2 MacBook Air is still about a 10 or 15% bump over M1. And same with the GPU, it's like 35, maybe 40% better than M1. But because the M2 MacBook Pro has a fan, it can remove heat that builds up over time. This device doesn't. The only way it can get rid of the heat is just to radiate it outwards and let your environment get rid of it. And the result is that the M2 MacBook Air is not good at maintaining a high level of performance for an extended period of time. I noticed that if you push the CPU and only the CPU, it'll get to like five or six minutes before it starts to throttle. If you're pushing everything, you're going like maximum effort, CPU and GPU going full tilt, it's like three to four minutes and you'll start to notice some heavy throttling. So the M2 MacBook Air has a fast processor, but if you compare it to the M2 MacBook Pro with its fan, depending on the workflow and how long you're pushing the system at maximum effort for, this can start to slow down significantly. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that people who are buying this system, like people who are looking at an M2 MacBook Air product as their regular computer, they're not people editing like 8K films and like compiling huge projects. Like that's just not the regular workflow that goes into a system like this. There are way more powerful tools from Apple if that's your workflow. But I was just surprised at how big of a difference there was between the fanless system and the fan equipped system on the M2 product. Like when the M2 MacBook Pro first came out and people were just looking at the reviews, there was this conversation of like, oh, who's gonna buy that thing? Who is it for? Well, I don't know, man. A, a little bit of airflow goes a long way when it comes to this chip. It's also very noticeable in games. Even the moderately demanding titles don't do as well on the M2 MacBook Air compared to the M2 MacBook Pro. The new MacBook Air just needs a little bit more air. Uh, okay, a quick note on the storage and the controversy that's surrounding it. So the base models of the M2 products, like both the, the Pro and the Air, come in at 256 gigs of storage. But this year, they're only using a single NAND for that drive. So it results in significantly slower drive speeds when you're running a drive speed benchmark. Now, there's concern over this because Apple Silicon performance can sometimes lean quite heavily on fast drives. Like if you have a big project and you don't have a lot of RAM and it's doing some disk swapping, it can hurt performance in a noticeable manner. The thing is, I think the vast majority of people on an M2 MacBook Air are not working on crazy big projects with like 10 Chrome tabs open. It's just not a thing. And even if you are working with huge video files, you're probably using one of the bigger drives that don't have these reduced speeds. I think regular workflows and even moderately demanding creative workflows are gonna be fine on the system. That being said, 
I think that their 512 gig storage option costing an extra $200 is criminal. I think that's just nuts. Uh, but also I think if they're gonna have slower drive speeds on those entry level models, they need to disclose that. It should be on the website, like maybe not plastered on the options, but like in the fine print even, it should be available for people to look at because that's just information people need to know. Okay, the display. This is running a 13.6 inch display. It's a really nice panel. There is a notch and for the people that are just new to the whole idea of the notch, you get used to it. You can hide it if you want and it's just extra screen real estate at the top for the menu bar. It's still a 60 Hertz panel, so no ProMotion, but it's bright, the colors are good, and the bezels are nice and thin now. Now this is a review unit that I can't open up, like I can't pop it open to show you the internals, but it's a fanless system, so there's probably not much to look at anyways. I used a thermal camera on the M2 MacBook Air, and this thing gets warm, warmer than I thought it would. So the back area gets around 40 degrees Celsius, like just right in the middle, and it radiates like outwards like you would expect. But on the flip side, like the keyboard deck area, this gets just as warm, but it's never uncomfortable to use. Now the keyboard is arguably the best keyboard that's ever been in a MacBook Air. This is a nice keyboard, spacious, nice to type on, nice travel. Uh, it's just, I think this is the way that every laptop keyboard should be. It's just a fantastic keyboard. It also has the fingerprint sensor on the top right, which works well like you'd expect from Apple. The webcam on the top is a 1080p webcam. This has good image quality and it is noticeably better than the one on the M2 MacBook Pro. Uh, speaker system, so there's four speakers and they're great. The shocking thing to me is how good they're able to get like the mid frequencies and lower frequencies, like the bassy stuff on a system so thin. Like there are gaming laptops that are probably five times thicker than this that don't sound as good. It's bizarre, but Apple does their speakers really well. Battery life was good for my testing. It's a little bit less than the M2 MacBook Pro, but still super solid. And again, it's amazing how much better Apple's battery life on their laptops is compared to any of the Windows competitors out there. Like they do a fantastic job with energy efficiency. My review unit came with this 35 watt adapter and it takes about an hour to charge this thing fully with this adapter, but they do have a optional 67 watt adapter that juices it up in I think like 30 minutes. But I did connect just a USB-C cable to the USB-C port uh, and you can get up to 70 watts from my testing through that port. So my overall take on the M2 MacBook Air, this is a fantastic device for people looking for something that can handle light to moderately demanding work. But if you're someone that wants like a very powerful system and you're hoping that something super thin and super light can handle it, Unfortunately, I would say that it can't. It's, it's weird that just the presence of a fan makes such a big difference in terms of sustained workflow. I was surprised by it, but that's just the nature of the M2 chip. It's just a more demanding chip than the previous generation. Okay, there you have it, the M2 MacBook Air.